This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the simplest and best website builder. What if I told you that it was the Emperor Tiberius' decision that Germania was not made a Roman province? It is very often wrongly portrayed in media and of course most of all in movies or series that after the Romans were defeated at the Battle of Teutoburg Forest in 9 AD, all Roman ambitions to conquer Germania Magna were forever destroyed. But, as with many other topics about the Roman Empire, this is wrong. In reality, things were much more complicated and indeed Germania was almost still conquered years later by Germanicus. Why then Germania still did not become a Roman province, why Tiberius is largely to blame for this and how a young commander called Germanicus avenged the Romans, we shall discuss in this video. The utter defeat and complete destruction of three entire Roman legions at the Battle of Teutoburg Forest still captures the imagination of many people even today. But as you can guess, the historical accuracy of most depictions of this brutal event is very lacking. In September of 9 AD, three entire legions, the 17th, 18th and 19th legion, were utterly defeated and destroyed by a Germanic coalition under command of Arminius a former Roman commander of Germanic origin who had betrayed the Romans and organized an ambush in a situation where they least expected it. The commander of the Roman legions, Publius Quintilius Varus, committed suicide among this disaster and the psychological shock for Rome was extremely great. According to Suetonius, Augustus years later could still be heard at times muttering Quintili Vare Legiones Rede. Quintilius Varus, give me back my legions. Even Varus's relatives became publicly hated figures because Varus allowed Arminius, who had previously served under his command, to deceive him so utterly and completely. And indeed, this defeat was great, yet it was not as great as it was made out to be by later historians. The idea that the disaster of Teutoburg Forest marked the end of Roman expansionism at the hands of the Germans stems from 19th and early 20th century German nationalism. This idea of the superior German strength holding back the Roman legions was of course an idea that was very welcomed by the leaders of the German Kaiserreich. It was the perfect propagandistic instrument in order to underscore the supposedly invincible German fighting prowess. Quite logically, the National Socialists especially loved to exaggerate this and to depict the Germans under Hermann, the German name of Arminius, as superior Aryans who were much stronger than the inferior Italic Romans. But long before the rise of the National Socialists, the German nationalistic idea of a superior German battle prowess was propagated for decades in the Kaiserreich and so became quite entrenched in the views of many historians. I personally find it thus quite surprising that these views are still being propagated even today that the defeat at Teutoburg Forest marked the end of Roman expansionism in the area at the hand of the Germans. In reality though, only a few years after this disaster, Germanicus, Germanicus, the young grandson of the Emperor Augustus, was made commander of the legions on the Rhine frontier in 13 AD. He was given command over eight legions and auxiliaries an incredibly large military power, which was probably up to 15% of the total fighting power of the entire Roman Empire. Upon arriving in Germania, he found the legions mutinying because the sentiment was understandably very bad after the Varus disaster. But he managed to negotiate with the legions by increasing their pay and thus preventing a full-scale rebellion. He financed this pay increase from his own private treasury. Understandably, he was instantly very popular with the legions. In 14 AD, Augustus died and Tiberius was appointed as Augustus' successor. Upon receiving these news, the legions offered to proclaim Germanicus emperor, but he remained loyal to the new emperor Tiberius. In order to further increase the loyalty and satisfaction of his legions, he started the first campaign against the German tribes across the Rhine. He ventured deep into Germania raiding the Marsi tribe, destroying villages and everything in his way as a revenge for the killed Romans at Teutoburg Forest. On the way back, Germanicus' legions defeated the Bructeri, Tubantes and Usipetes tribes in several battles. For this, 
He was recalled to Rome and awarded a triumph on January the 1st of the year 15 AD. But the Emperor Tiberius saw the popularity of Germanicus, both the legions and the population loved him for his generosity and his victories and Tiberius feared that he could overthrow him. And this jealousy would be the beginning of the end for Roman Germania. Maybe if Tiberius would have had the internet, he would have decided otherwise, but unfortunately this amazing technology did not exist back then. We on the other hand are very lucky to have it and thanks to Squarespace, you can even create the most amazing websites ever in a super simple and easy to understand way. Squarespace is hands down the easiest, most intuitive and best website builder that currently exists in my opinion. There is no need to know coding, then search engine optimization SEO is already integrated and you have the most powerful analytics tools at your disposal. With just a few clicks and by dragging and dropping you can create the most impressive websites and they are already super optimized from the get go. No matter if you want to create a history blog or an online shop or anything really, there is no better way than with Squarespace because you have all the necessary tools already integrated. I am thinking about sooner or later starting a blog about late Roman history and when the time comes you can be absolutely sure that I will use Squarespace. So don't hesitate and go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Majorianos to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Oh and by doing that you don't only create a super awesome website of your own, but you also support this channel and help to end misconceptions about the late Romans. Thank you friend of late Roman history. So back to Germanicus and Tiberius. Tiberius's character and his jealousy of Germanicus, as we shall see, was the real reason that Germania never became a Roman province, which is all too often forgotten to be mentioned in history books. After returning from Rome to the Rhine frontier, Germanicus immediately embarked on a second campaign against the Germanic tribes. He crossed the Rhine in the spring of 15 AD, attacking the Chatti and sacking their capital Matium. During one of these campaigns, he even managed to take Arminius' wife to Snelda as prisoner. Upon this, Arminius, Hermann, himself called his tribe the Cheruski and the surrounding tribes to arms. Then Germanicus' forces went through the territory of the Bructeri, where one of his generals, Lucius Stertinius, recovered the lost eagle of the 19th legion from this tribe after defeating them in battle. Germanicus continued sacking and pillaging everything in his way, making way westward to the site of where the Battle of Teutoburg Forest had taken place six years before. Many of the dead Roman soldiers of that battle were found lying around and Germanicus ordered them to be buried. After that he attacked the Cheruski themselves, making way into their heartland. At a location which Tacitus called the Long Causeways, Pontes Longi, Arminius attacked the Romans. There, the forces of Germanicus were initially caught off guard, but could turn the situation around. The fighting lasted for two days, but no side was able to achieve a decisive victory. The losses on each side are unknown. After this, Germanicus decided to regroup at the Rhine bases in order to launch an even bigger attack. This happened then in 16 AD, when he had amassed enough reinforcements in order to launch another campaign, a third one into Germanic enemy territory. He still commanded 8 legions plus Gallic and Germanic auxiliary troops, a total army size that could have amounted to about 80,000 men. He then ventured again deep into Keruski territory and at Idavisto near modern day Rinteln in Germany, his forces met the ones of Arminius. According to Tacitus, this was a decisive Roman victory. Tacitus writes, the enemy was slaughtered from the fifth hour of daylight to nightfall and for 10 miles the ground was littered with corpses and weapons. Arminius barely escaped this battle with his life. According to Tacitus, the victorious Romans raised a trophy with the names of defeated Germanic tribes which enraged the Germans so much that they attacked the Romans again but hastily and too soon. Therefore the Romans won again and the defeated Germanic tribes fled the scene as best as they could. Germanicus then ordered some of his forces under Gaius Stilius to march against the Chatti, laying waste to their territory while he himself invaded once again the territory of the Marsi for the third time and devastated their lands. He forced Maluvendus, 
the defeated leader of the Marsi to reveal the location of another one of the three eagles lost in 9 AD. He was thus able to also recover that eagle. Thus, after these three campaigns, Germanicus had retrieved two of the three lost eagles of the Varus battle, had defeated the Germanic tribes between the Rhine and Elbe river and had even prevented a rebellion of the legions themselves after arriving in Germania in 13 AD. Germanicus requested to launch a fourth and final campaign into Germania, which would have subjugated the Germanic tribes for good and would have been the foundation to make Germania Magna a Roman province. But Tiberius decided otherwise and Germanicus was recalled to Rome by the Emperor, where he arrived in early 17 AD, receiving a giant triumph for his successes. Now naturally, you can guess that these victories of Germanicus have not been mentioned by the German nationalists in the late 19th century, nor by the national socialists in the 1930s. It is quite obvious that despite the disastrous setback of Varus, Germania could still have been made a Roman province. The complete and utter victory of the Romans was almost achieved and the fourth and final campaign would have probably completely defeated all remaining resistance in Germania Magna. So why then didn't Tiberius do exactly that? First of all, Germanicus's growing popularity made Tiberius fear Germanicus, as he would have easily been able to have himself proclaimed emperor, march on Rome and depose Tiberius. That is why he gave Germanicus a different command in the east, far away from Germania. And then the Romans generally viewed Germania as a country of little strategic interest, almost non-existent infrastructure, extremely hostile and rebellious tribes, and little mineral or natural resources to be harvested, except of course from large amounts of wood. Making Germania a Roman province would have been costly and so Tiberius chose to consolidate Roman power instead, which in hindsight we will never know if it was a good or bad thing. Tiberius did not wage many wars, did not conquer new territories, but chose to consolidate what his predecessor Augustus had established and so left the empire with a huge budgetary surplus and a very vital border defense and strong army. Making Germania a province on the other hand might have come in handy a few hundred years later when the Germanic tribes started invading the western empire because many of the tribes that invaded the empire in the 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th centuries AD were living on the very area of Germania Magna and would have been Romanized in such an alternate timeline, the same way that the Gallic tribes had all been utterly Romanized by the time of the 5th century AD. So the time of the great migrations would possibly have gone very differently had Germania Magna been part of the Roman Empire. But then again, it might have also been worse. One could also make an argument that this province would have spawned many usurpers, such as seen with Britannia in our timeline. So we unfortunately will never know what would have happened if Tiberius had let Germanicus finish his campaigns and establish a Roman province on that territory of modern day Germany. One thing is certain though, the world would probably be different or at least the European political landscape certainly would. So the Roman ambitions to conquer Germania, contrary to many modern day depictions, did not end with the Battle of Teutoburg Forest, but they really ended in 17 AD when Germanicus was recalled to Rome, leaving his campaigns almost finished, but only almost. Hermann Arminius died only a few years later in 21 AD, killed by his own tribesmen. Such is often the fate of two powerful leaders. But we will always ask ourselves what would have happened if Tiberius had chosen to make Germania Magna a Roman province. And please like and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting my work on Patreon or via YouTube membership because long term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. And I would especially like to thank our new Sol Invictus members Maxim Gwiazda and Tamar al Hajiri. Thank you so much Maxim and Tamar for supporting this channel in such a generous way. I really cannot thank you guys enough. And I would also like to thank our new Kaisar member Gordon SH24. 
Thank you so much Gordon for your generous support. This channel is only made possible thanks to amazing people like you and I would like to thank each and everyone who is supporting this channel in any way, be it Patreon, YouTube membership or PayPal donations or simply by watching of course. Gratias Tibiago Amiki. And if you want to learn more about how exactly the Western Roman Empire fell, you can watch this video in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in learning what exactly this fall meant for the city of Rome itself, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and Benevalete.